This video will cover how to set up an event. Gathering supporters helps build meaningful relationships. You can create event pages for community events, parties, large conferences, or even digital hangouts. From an event page, you can accept RSVPs, fill volunteer shifts, sell tickets, track attendance, and more. Step 1. Create an event. Note, you need to set up a calendar page before you can add events because they live within a calendar page. To create an event, you'll go to your calendar page and find the Events and Subpages tab. Click New Event. Give the event a name, slug, status, and click Create Page. Under Event Settings Basics, begin by entering the time for the event. Set the time zone for the location. The length can be entered in hours, minutes, or days. Next, add the venue name. Limit attendees by entering a maximum capacity. This will cap the number of RSVPs allowed. If you enter zero, there's no limit to the people who can RSVP. Use the additional number of RSVPs to add a number of offline RSVPs to the total capacity. If you sell tickets for your event, the capacity for your event will be overridden by the limits set on your tickets. A contact person can be an invaluable helper on the day of the event. Enter the contact person's name, email address, and phone number. You can choose to have this information hidden on the public event page by checking the box, Don't Publish Contact Email Address or Phone Number. There are a series of checkboxes on the side of the page that will affect the complexity of your event settings. These include Sell Tickets, this allows you to sell tickets for the event. Accept RSVPs, allows people to RSVP for the event. Allows Guests Plus One, RSVPs can enter the number of guests they will bring to the event. The total group number will be deducted from the maximum capacity. Show who RSVP'd. The profile photo and name of each RSVP will be shown in a stream on the public event page. And ask to sign up for shifts. Ask RSVPs to sign up for shifts during the event. Click the Save Settings button at the bottom of the page before continuing. If you make changes without saving, they will be lost. Step 2. Add the location. Enter the venue's address under Event Settings Location. Include the venue name, street, city, state, zip code, and country. An exact address will generate a Google map that is included in the event page and the overall calendar page if your event is part of a calendar. Click Save Location to save your settings. Step 3. Ticketing. To sell tickets via your nation, you must first check the box Sell Tickets at Event Settings Basics. When this box is checked, two drop-down menus appear. First, select the donation or invoice page that the visitor will use to process the payment. If you already have a donation page, we recommend creating a separate one for selling tickets. The second menu selects a tracking code for the transactions to monitor how much money you've collected through ticket purchases. If both the event page and the payment pages have tracking codes, only the tracking code from the payment page will be added to the ticket sale. Click Save Settings at the bottom of the page before creating ticket levels. Next, configure your ticket level prices under Event Settings, Tickets. Note, the ability to have multiple ticket levels is only available on organization and network plans. First, name the ticket level in the name text box. For example, Individual, GA, or VIP. Write an optional description of the ticket level in the description text box. This will display under the ticket price on the public event page. Enter a ticket price. This must be a positive amount. If you'd like to create a free event, uncheck the box next to sell tickets and check the box next to accept RSVPs. Set a ticket level limit. This is the number of tickets that can be purchased. Indicate how many tickets a ticket level purchases. This is best used when you are giving a discounted rate for couples or group tickets. Click Save. To delete any ticket levels, hover over the level at the bottom of the page and click on the arrow. Please note that a person buying a ticket will receive two auto-response emails one confirming their RSVP, and one with the receipt of purchase. If you plan to sell tickets outside your nation, you can accept RSVPs for your event and send people to a third-party website to purchase tickets. To do this, do not check the box next to Sell Tickets at Event Settings Basics. Under Event Settings Tickets, indicate the URL where people can purchase tickets. You are also able to enter the price for the tickets in the Ticket Price text box. Step 4. Hosts Further refine your event by adding hosts under Event Settings, Hosts. To add a host for the event, the person must already have a profile in the People section. First, click on the drop-down menu. A blank search box will appear. Enter the name, email, or Twitter handle of the person you wish to add as host. Click Add Host. Add the host to a list by selecting the arrow. To remove a host from the event, also click on the arrow and delete. 
If an RSVP selects a host, the host will be listed as the RSVP's recruiter on that person's profile. Step 5. Volunteers and Shifts Volunteers can play a critical role in ensuring your event runs smoothly. Recruit volunteers for your event by using a volunteer sign-up page or by creating volunteer shifts. Note that if this is a ticketed event, volunteer options are not displayed on your public event page. To use a volunteer sign-up page, select the Ask to Sign Up for Shifts checkbox under Event Settings, Basics, and click Save Settings. Anyone who visits your event page will check the box, I want to volunteer. If this box is checked, the RSVP will be directed to your default volunteer page. Set this under Website, Pages, Defaults. It's a good idea to add a role to your volunteer page specific to the event. You may also ask RSVPs to sign up for shifts during the event. Create shifts by checking the Ask to Sign Up for Shifts checkbox at Event Settings Basics. Click Save Settings at the bottom of the page. Add shifts under Event Settings Shifts. Enter the time the shift starts. Enter the duration of the shifts in hours or minutes. Include a goal for how many people you want to sign up. Click Save. Edit any shift by hovering over it and clicking Edit. Delete a shift by clicking on the arrow. Step 6. RSVP and Attendee Settings Under Event Settings Advanced, add tags to any person who has either RSVP'd or attended. A tag is a resource for tracking people connected to an event. They are searchable and will also display at the top of a person's profile. Note, setting up event tags is best used for tracking people who attend a series of related events. Since you can already use existing filter criteria to find the specific event someone RSVP'd to, attended, or hosted. You may also assign a point person to anyone who RSVPs if a point person does not already exist for that person's profile. You can assign membership. You are also able to add a person to a path and direct them to another page once they've RSVP'd. After the event. Since events exist in time, event pages will expire the morning after an event took place. When this happens, the page status and settings, page settings, will change from published to expired. An expired page will be hidden from the site, but it can be found via search. Take note that users can still RSVP on that page even if the event has passed. To turn off RSVPs for past events, change the page's status to deleted. This will remove the page completely from your site, but it will remain accessible to you in your control panel. Alternatively, if you do not want to delete the page, you can uncheck Accept RSVPs under Event Settings Basics. This will keep the page accessible via search, but people will no longer be able to RSVP for the event.